period of past 20 years or so, education, both the manner in which it is imparted and also the manner in which it is received by students has undergone a sea change. Uh, while it could be argued that the basic purpose remains the same, which is career and employment, the manner, the kind of problems that universities now have to deal with include integration of technology in classrooms, new methods of imparting learning. How is it being done at Galgotia's university? Well, uh, as you correctly said, teaching pedagogy has undergone a sea change. Earlier when it used to be purely a theoretical, well, it all starts with the syllabi. So earlier the syllabi was purely theoretical and there was no industry inputs from that. Today our syllabi is uh, very much uh, made in sync with industry. There is a board of studies and where the board of studies members are drawn from uh, not only academicians but a good part of it is uh, drawn from the industry also. So after the two get together the syllabi is made which is very much in sync with the industrial requirements. So that is a very very major change that has, uh, uh, which has taken place. And then as you rightly said, it's an overall development. It's not just the, uh, the academic part. We have introduced soft skills also. We realized that the uh, communication skills was a very important factor which was pulling them down. Okay. And second was the technical skills. So how do we take care of that? Right. So we thought we will have the English professional communication as part of the curriculum. So that really changed that the the communication because you can't change a communication in a few months it has to be built into the program right. so we uh, and then to make them uh, serious we ensured that they became a credit course right. so that that's how t through these kind of changes we ensured that the soft skills also improved the right. technical skills which would mean the latest in technologies which would need to be given over and above the course right. so all that combined to give it the education the correct uh, uh, i would say the correct changes took place so that they were more in sync with the requirement of the industry. Now research opportunities, whenever someone talks about research opportunities, uh, especially 10, 15 years ago, uh, people used to say that either I'm going to US, UK or to Germany, depending on the area in which they wanted to do their research. Things have changed, uh, not too dramatically, but the change has definitely been positive. Uh, what are the kind of research opportunities your students have available for them at Galgotia's university. So again, research is a mindset. It has to be inculcated not only in the students, but in the entire ecosystem of the university, be it faculty or be it students or be it the infrastructure. So towards research, A, we have created a, a research uh, center of excellence, be it for uh, uh, nanotechnology or be it for, uh, for law or for any other subjects. So A, there is an infrastructure which has created, there is a center of excellence which we have created for various programs where you have, you, the students have the option for research in those areas. Right. Uh, then of course there is a faculty. The faculty also has to be research driven. Right. So we, we, uh, we do promote faculty to go for research, for papers, for international uh, conferences and that also keeps them up to date with the entire, uh, with the research trends. Right. And then the students also encourage research, 50% of the marks that they get are through research based projects. Right. So it's a combination of all these factors which lead to good research. Right. Although I would say there is much more that is now required in terms of research because India as such is not as focused on research as you would say probably US or Germany is. Right. But I think we, there is a, a step in the right direction. There's still a long way to go right. but yes it's a step in the right direction. We have realized the importance of research right. in the education system. What is your view of public-private partnership? Do you see that as a possible solution, especially keeping in mind the huge number of students that we have across the country? I would say private education's role in the education is going to only get more important with each passing year. Because the government having very limited resources uh, is obviously unable to fill the gap. And that's the whole purpose of why they, the private edition of education did, did start. So the private enterprise role in education is uh, undisputed. And, uh, but of course there are some policy uh, norms that probably is a bit of an impediment towards the education sector really opening up for the corporates. Uh, the principal, the main factor being the not-for-profit uh, tag that is uh, required. It's a prerequisite for the opening of uh, any university or education setup. Right. Because it doesn't help anyway. Right. It, it will not, uh, it is not allowing the corporates to come in. Why should they come for not-for-profit? And it's a misconception that if they have it not for profit, 
it will probably be uh, uh, the fees will not be charged the way it is being charged. Fees, the charging of fees has nothing to do with the setup of whether it is not profit or for profit. Okay. Today, the fees is being determined by the market. If you are giving good education, the students are going to come to you. If you are not quality oriented, even if you have uh, for free, nobody is going to come to you. Right. So, but I think the biggest stumbling block is the not for profit. They have to remove that to be able to get more investment in the education sector. I think that's the key. That's the key that needs to change. Now, what kind of changes you see emerging? in next five to ten years as far as the education sector is concerned? Over the period of I would say ten to fifteen years there has been a sea change in the way the education changed. Student now had a choice. So then the comp because of the healthy competition it is now survival of the fittest. So the, the institution is giving quality not because of any dictat by the UGC or by the ASCT because that will never be able to bring the correct the level of quality that is required. It's only your survival which will ensure right. that the quality is given. So to that extent, this uh, uh, mushrooming of institutions across the country has helped in giving it the right competition. What kind of policy changes you expect the government to keep in mind, especially while formulating the education policy, to encourage the participation of private players in the education sector? So the biggest uh, policy change that I would want is to remove that not-for-profit tag. It could be a mix, like US, there is for not-for-profit and for-profit. So not-for-profit is being done by the government, mm -hmm. where they have the, the capacity to build large institutions, give more focus on research. But for private institutions, there should be an option for profit. Uh, for, for profit. Because then the main corporates will come in, they will get investments through venture capital and so on and so forth. And you, because education is a very capital-intensive uh, project. so. To be able to do that, if you remove the not-for-profit, a lot of investment, uh, investment will come this way. Right. And that will further boost the education sector. Sure. Because not pro even if we are not-for-profit, the fees is not determined by whether we are for-profit or whether we are not-for-profit. Right. So there is no bearing of fees in that. Right. Being not-for-profit just means that you, the, society, the money from the society remains in the society. Right. So it's a total misconception. There is nothing, to, fees has nothing to do with the not-for-profit tag. Right. In fact, the government is losing revenues. Nobody minds paying taxes on um, uh, in the education sector. Okay. But because of this, you are compelled not to uh, give taxes. Right. So I think this needs to be seriously uh, looked at by the government level. And uh, it's, uh, it's a gain by everybody. See, my vision is to create a university, uh, a world-class university, but again, it's a very oft repeated word, world class, everyone wants to be world class, everybody is number one. But what really is a world class institution? It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's coming together of various activities. It's the pedagogical approach of teaching, it's the infrastructure, it's the student that you get in. It's a combination of all these factors into one. And India is not lacking in any of the ingredients to become a, a world class university. You have the best faculty here, there's no problem getting the required infrastructure. So it's more, uh, it's a more a vision, a desire to become world class. And why should a student go out of this country for studying? When you have everything here. When you go abroad, you, in the best universities, you have Indian professors teaching. So you just have to create the same ecosystem over here to be able to become world class. On that note, we will wrap up.